welcome to Daily Reflection with Anil Rwana. Today is the 2nd of February, 2021. We're going to reflect on Luke 2, 22 to 40. A very long one. Listen. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took Jesus to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts, When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him, Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and the sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. The Gospel of the Lord. Today's rather long passage describes the presentation of Jesus at the temple in Jerusalem to officially induct him into Judaism. When he is brought to the temple by Mary and Joseph, two lay people come to meet him. There are Simeon and Anna holy, prayerful, and spirit-filled. Simeon takes the child into his arms and praises God, saying to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Although there are many ways to understand this prophecy, let us keep it simple. Simeon is stating an essential truth. The thoughts of many hearts will be revealed because of Jesus. How? One reason is simply because he is the light of the world, which shines not only in the darkness that surrounds us, but also flashes a light into the dark corners of our hearts. It reveals every deception, exposes every hypocrisy, discloses every evil inclination. How we respond to this illumination will determine our rise and fall rising to be with the Father or falling to be with the enemy. If we choose not to see it, we fall. If we choose to repent, we rise. Add the cross to this equation and our response to the death and resurrection of Christ also determines our rise and fall. This does not merely consist of believing that he died for our sins, but living the new life he gives us by his resurrection. How do we know we are leading this new life? The word will show us. In a verse that strongly resembles Simeon's prophecy, Scripture declares, For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It goes on to say words that might be less familiar to us. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Again, see, rise and fall, because we will be called to account for all we do. But let us not be daunted. 
Instead, let us be brave and make David's prayer our own. Search me, God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. And if he shows us anything offensive, let's fix it right away. And that's really getting to the heart of the matter. God bless you. 